ओम नम शिवाय शिव जी सदा सहाय ओम नम शिवाय गुरु जी सदा सहाय वाइपिंग अवे अ मदर्स टीयर्स सेविंग अ मैंस जॉब Year 1998 changed everything for the Lal family. Their eldest son died in an accident in the Delhi cantonment area. Mr. Kanwar Lal's wife couldn't bear the blow and fell victim to a heavy depression. Then a friend of Kanwar's, Prem Singh, a former Indian ambassador to Singapore, happened to meet him. Prem naturally inquired about the family and was told of what had happened. Unknown to Kanwar, Prem Singh was a devotee of Guruji, and he directed his friend towards Guruji. Kanwar went one morning to Guruji's place at Empire Estate. He showed the ambassador's visiting card and requested entry. He was told by a devotee at the entrance, Sudama, that this was not the time to visit Guruji. Kanwar persisted in trying to show the ambassador's visiting card to Guruji. Sudama was not impressed. He told the distressed father that many ambassadors came to Guruji's darbar, which was held only in the evening, and Kanwar should come then. Kanwar returned and spoke to his friend, who advised him to retrace his steps. In the evening, Kanwar found his friend waiting for him at the Empire Estate gate, and together they went in. Guruji allowed Kanwar an audience, and the father was able to report his troubles to the Sadguru. Guruji placed a copper tumbler that Kanwar's wife had to drink water from to get rid of her prolonged depression. The remedy, simple as it is, always seems proved vastly effective. Within fifteen days, the bereaved mother had turned the corner. She stopped crying. Her low blood pressure normalized, and she felt okay. It was May of two thousand, and the family started coming to Guruji. The family took a short break and went to Manali. When Kanwar returned to Delhi, he found that he had been re- he had been reassigned jobs. He was going to be relieved from his custom duties at IGI Airport, and had to join duty at Custom House in New Delhi on July fifteen. But when he went to Guruji's, the Sadguru suggested another break. The date was June twenty fourth when the master advised Kanwar and family to go for a week's holiday. Kanwar's faith in Guruji was not yet steady, so he admits today. Disregarding Guruji's advice, Kanwar attended office. During that week, on June four, a departmental inquiry was initiated against forty-eight customs officers. Kanwar was one of them. Had Kanwar obeyed Guruji, he wouldn't have been named. Kanwar again brought his problem before Guruji. The omniscient master dismissed his worries and instead pointed to another area of concern: his daughter's marriage. Kanwar wasn't relieved, but events showed that his worry was baseless. On the forty-eight officers of the forty-eight officers named, thirty-three were proceeded against. Kanwar and other officers whose names came below him in the departmental list were not named. Later, when prosecution proceedings were initiated against the thirty-three officers. Kanwar was not even touched. Guruji turns middleman for a marriage. On Guruji's advice, Kanwar had taken his first step in the old Indian marriage game, the hunt for a suitable boy. An Indian oil engineer seemed a likely candidate, and following Indian custom, came with his parents to see the girl. Before the all-important visit, Guruji called up Kanwar and specifically asked him to offer the young man's father. White rascullas, an Indian sweet. The candidate's parents were presented a lavish spread. Then, one by one, first Kanwar himself, then his wife, and then his son offered the boy's father the rascullas. Each time, and for reasons best known to the Sadguru, the candidate's father declined. Kanwar's family had by now known enough of Guruji's ways to suspect that something was amiss. When they went in the evening for his darshan at Empire Estate, Guruji made a pithy comment: "Even beautiful roses have thorns." The family understood it to mean that the boy was not suitable for their girl. Moreover, the boy's family also dropped the matter. Some time later, another likely candidate was found for the girl, a promising young judicial magistrate in Delhi. He came to see the girl and liked her, phoning up Kanwar as he was. returning from the visit to make his affirmation known he also asked the girl's father to get his parents approval the lals went to the boy's parents at their native home but nothing came of the visit 
till one day Guruji phoned up Kanwar. Out of the blue, he asked his devotee where good chaat, something spicy Indian appetizers, could be had. Kanwar replied that to his knowledge, a corner shop near the UPSC building at Shah Jahan Road served very good quality. Guruji asked him to be there at 6.30 p.m. At 6.30 p.m., Guruji arrived with a few devotees. Chat was brought and Guruji gave a plate to Kanwar, congratulating him on his daughter's wedding getting fixed. Then the devotees felicitated him. Kanwar was left wondering what was happening, for only he knew that there had been silence from the judicial magistrate's side, that too for nearly two months. Soon, however, the good news came. As usual, the Guru's words had proved prophetic. Guruji's magisterial grace for son-in-law. Kanwar's son-in-law had given his departmental exams and cleared every paper but one, which was quite irregular. His father-in-law brought the matter before Guruji. The Satguru remarked that the boy should have cleared the exam and that he would. Kanwar felt Guruji was hinting that someone had tried to thwart his son-in-law's professional advancement. Soon, a full bench of the High Court sat for the judicial review of the examination procedure of the candidate. Looking at his performance and his peers' comments, as noted in the annual confidential report, the bench ruled in his favour and had judged he had passed the exam. Son has scratchless accident. Kanwar's son, Rohit, was not getting hostel accommodation in the PJ Engineering College on the Sohana Palwal Road that winds out of Gurgaon. His son's death due to an accident in the back of his... In the back of his mind, Kanwar was worried about sending his son 65 kilometers away to the engineering institute. But Guruji reassured him. As fate would have it, one day the coalition in which his son commuted to his college hit a truck on the Sohana Road. The driver lost an eye and all the other students were injured. Rohit, as Guruji would have it, had nearly a scratch. When Kanwar came to Guruji in the evening, the Satguru simply said, I have saved your son. Guruji's benign ways continued to rain on Rohit. He was unable to enter the third year of his engineering course because he had not been able to clear a paper in the first semester of the first year. When Guruji came to know of that, he just said that Rohit would get it to the third year. Then a divine providence would have it. FPJ changed its rule. Now students were allowed to go into the third year if they had passed at least 18 out of the 20 exams they had sat for during the course of their engineering stu studies. Rohit thus could go into the third year of his course. That this was Guruji's divine will in operation was proved when a year later the institute reverted to its rule. Clearly, school rules had to bow to the Sadhguru's will. Healing without an operation. Kanwar's mother-in-law was slated to have an operation at Sir Ganga Ram Hospital on her right knee, which pained her a lot. But Guruji expressly forbade the operation, going to the extent of telling Kanwar to not even take his mother-in-law near the hospital. As per that Sadhguru's direction, the copper tumbler with water remedy was again given. The simple yet potent cure worked wonders yet again. The knee stopped paining in a month and regained flexibility. Satsang, as narrated of Kanwarlal, Superintendent Customs and Central Excise, Delhi. Anantam Shukrana Guru Maharaj.